Hi, John Rhodes here and welcome back. A big hello to all of you that have tuned in to the channel. Thank you to those of you that have subscribed and sent messages. It's always so good to get feedback and questions from you when you've watched the video. In this presentation, I'm going to be looking at the root canal treatment of a maxillary molar. The tooth is fairly tricky because the canals are quite sclerosed and I'll show you how I found all the canals, including that elusive MB2, disinfected and irrigated before sealing with a BC sealer and GP combination. Now on the messaging, there's been quite a bit of debate about whether I should have music on the videos or not. And the general consensus is that you would prefer some music. So whilst we do this molar root canal treatment, I'm going to be playing some nice smooth jazz. So with no further ado, I'm going to hand you over to the video and this one I've entitled A Mucky Molar. Enjoy and see you at the end. Here you can see the preoptive radiograph of the maxillary right first molar. The tooth is carious and there's a periapical radiolucency. The first assessment that we have to make is a restorative one. There's no point carrying out root canal treatment if the tooth cannot be restored. The root canals appear sclerosed on the radiograph and moderately curved, but don't forget that some of the more acute curvatures occur in the plane that is not visible on the radiograph. The tooth had been left open to the oral cavity and here you can see very established plaque on the tooth surface. I've cleaned up the tooth and now I'm irrigating with 3% sodium hypochlorite, initially visualising the orifices of the root canals on the pulp floor. Here I'm using a ProTaper SX instrument to lightly flare the orifices of the root canals. I'm going to use a StarTex 3 to trough along the line between the MB1 and the palatal canal to locate the orifice of the MB2. The electronic apex locator is used to confirm the working length of all the canals to a reproducible reference point. The size 10 stainless steel hand file used to confirm the working length has created a glide path which can now be tapered using rotary or reciprocating instruments. You can see how much dentine debris is created by the reciprocating file and this needs to be removed frequently with irrigant, in this case 3% sodium hypochlorite. Between irrigation sequences, I recapitulate with a hand file to confirm patency and make sure any dentine chips that remain in the canal are distributed within the irrigant. This sequence of rotary or reciprocating instrumentation followed by irrigation and patency filing can be continued until the canal has been tapered to the full working length. It's important to keep irrigating frequently to make sure that the dentine debris is in solution and doesn't clog the root canal or cause the file to bind which can make it fracture. Here I'm completing preparation on the more challenging MB2.
I like to do my cone fitting with irrigant in the root canals. These GP cones can also be used to agitate the irrigant in GP pumping. After drawing the root canals, I'm going to obturate them using a BC sealer and gutter perker technique. Here some sealer is introduced into the coronal part of the root canal. GP cones are gently inserted through the BC sealer to the full working length. In doing so, they will carry sealer right to the apex. I'm now using an electric heated plugger to condense the coronal part of the GP in each of the canals. These will then be plugged with a cold plugger. Backfilling is easily carried out using a thermoplasticized gutta perca technique, in this case Obtura. I'm using an LN Burr with water spray to clean up the orifices of the obturated root canals ready for restoration in this case with a fiber post and dual cure composite. As part of the resto sequence I'm using a fiber post in the palatal canal and dual cure composite to build up a core ready for the general practitioner to place a full coverage crown.
So to round up, we can see the preoptive radiograph with the periopical radiolucency. The final radiograph postoperatively showing a good coronal apical seal. And the reverse angled view which clearly shows the MB1 and MB2 canals. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that video. Stay tuned because I will be posting some more very shortly. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, but above all, enjoy your endo.